So today we hear about a really special event in Jesus' life. So I'm going to pretend like we're doing it now. So imagine, Jesus took three of his apostles, Peter, James, and John. I'm going to pretend like you all are Peter, James, and John. And he brought them up a mountain. And so Jesus was there, and Peter, James, and John, there with him. And in the midst of them, all of a sudden, Jesus becomes what we call glorified. Okay, imagine. He became, it said, his clothes became whiter than the whitest could bleach clothes. So it was like a new white. They couldn't describe how white it was. That's how white his clothes became. And then all of a sudden, there was Moses and Elijah. Moses representing this great, great figure who gave them the law and brought the people out of Egypt. Elijah was this really, really important prophet. It meant that the law and the prophets were with Jesus, and he's there in the center. And so they're talking to him. And do you know what else happened in the midst of that? All of a sudden, a cloud came. And from this cloud came a voice and said, This is my beloved son. Do you know whose voice that was? Yeah. God the Father, right? And he's speaking about Jesus, God the Son. Do you know what else he said after he said, This is my beloved son? Do you know what he said? Do you know what God the Father said? You should listen to him. That's exactly what he said. Did you know that there were three really important moments in Jesus' life that are kind of like transfiguration moments when we heard who he was being identified? One came at his baptism. Do you remember there was a dove that came down like the Holy Spirit when Jesus was baptized? And then there was the voice of God that said, this is my beloved son. So that was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Then in the middle was this transfiguration moment when he was with Peter, James, and John on that mountain. And that voice came again and said, this is my beloved son. Did you know there was one more moment? And that was at the end of Jesus' life, after he died on the cross for us. But it didn't come from the Father. It came from a Roman soldier, one who had helped put him to death. And he would say, after he saw the way that Jesus died, he would say, this surely was the Son of God. So we hear that voice listen to him, and we know that who are we listening to? We're listening to the Son of God. Do you think the Son of God can be trusted? I think so, right? Do you know how important it is to listen to Jesus? I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you on a field trip, okay? We're going to come. Actually, you all can just stand in your plates, and I'm going to come right back here. And so you can stand in such a way that you can see me back here, okay? Did you know that when each of you were baptized... There was something that was really, really important that was said to you after you were baptized. So you were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But after you were baptized, the priest or the deacon said words. It's called the Ephetha rite, because it's words that Jesus spoke over someone deaf and someone that was mute, someone that couldn't hear and someone that couldn't speak. And so the priest or the deacon makes the sign of the cross over your lips and over your ears. And the priest or deacon says, May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith 
with your lip to the glory and praise of God the Father. So it is your mission, it is my mission, it is everyone's mission and invitation here to listen to the voice of Jesus. And you were told that when you were really, really small. Okay, you can go back to mom and dad now. The Transfiguration was this powerful moment for the apostles. It's a powerful moment for us when we see Jesus in all of his glory and we hear that command, listen to him. There are moments in our life when we have what I like to call transfiguration moments as well. When all of a sudden, something clearly comes through. It's like the glory of God comes through and confirms us on our path. God speaks to us so clearly. It's like heaven is opened and we have this direct connection with God. I'd like to share uh, one of those moments out of my little uh, journal of faith, hope, and love. It's a little transfiguration moment which fills me with faith, hope, and love. I was in uh, college and I didn't want to commit to my faith. It was one of those things where I was, I was a little distant. Okay, Lord, I'll go to Mass, but I don't think I'm really, I don't want the priest to know who I am. I kind of want to scoot out. I don't know if any of you have ever been there before. But I was at Mass and the priest saw me and he said, hey, you know, I see you here quite regularly. And I said, oh, no. He knows who I am. And so he invited me to get a little bit involved with the youth group. And so I got involved with that youth group there at that church. And then as I got a little bit involved, he said, hey, we're going on uh, this youth trip, this youth retreat up at Covecrest. It's up in Georgia. It's this great week-long camp that happens in the summer, which, by the way, uh, we have some spots open for a Covecrest camp uh, for high schoolers. And so, as I went up to this camp as a chaperone, kind of got roped into it, I'm not going to lie, I had this incredibly powerful experience. I had one of those confessions to a priest while I was up there. Have you ever had one of those confessions where you literally feel the weight go off of you? It's like you feel God's forgiveness. It's so direct. I brought a book up with me, a random book that I found, and I had gotten, somebody told me to get it. And as I read through that book, every page seemed to speak to me, answered questions about my faith that I had had. The talks that the people gave to these teens were like piercing through my heart. It was as if the Lord had prepared that retreat, not for those kids, but for me. I returned home with this deep joy about my faith. There was this freedom that was there. There was this excitement. And I knew that God was inviting me to be more involved. But just as God invited Abraham into the unknown, I didn't know where that would lead me. We all have those transfiguration moments in our lives. When as you're reading scripture, all of a sudden, something's happening. You don't know necessarily what, but it's like the words are speaking to you. When the words of a homily seem to pierce through, when confession, you go to confession, and you experience this weight lifted and you can't explain it. When your child is born and you're sitting there and you're brought to tears at what God has done at what, what's in front of you, and you know that you are invited to give the rest of your life and you are excited to dedicate the rest of your life to this child who has just brought, been brought into this world. I invite you to simply reflect during this week, during this Lent, on those transfiguration moments 
They are powerful. They continue to call you deeper. They confirm who God is in your life and who you are, what your identity is. And when we go back to them and we remember them, there is a joy that is brought. There is this deeper relationship that we're brought into, this gratitude that we have with the Lord. And it ignites something within us in which we want to be deeper followers and disciples of him. Amen.